This can be as simple as doing a sphere cast. However, while the attack is happening, the game is still listening to. So that coupled with a certain detection FOV. Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, a professional indie game developer, and here I will react and analyze a gameplay trailer. I will talk about how things work behind the scenes and how you could build them in your own games. It's been a while since I've made one of these videos, you can go watch the full playlist if you want to learn more about some other games. In this case, we're going to look at the Elden Ring gameplay trailer from E3 2021. Alright, so let's hit play. The tarnished will soon return, guided by grace once lost. The golden order is broken to its core. Now, the very first mechanic that we see is over here the horse summoning. So one of the main differences between this game and the Souls games is the fact that this one is meant to be open world. So the horse is going to be the main way that you traverse through that world. And it's also interesting to take a look at the method they use for summoning the horse. Now usually what most games do when you press a button is the horse is spawned off screen and then runs to you. So the game knows where the player is and knows where the player is looking at. So based on the camera direction and the field of view, you can easily calculate a bunch of positions that are just outside of the player's view. So in most games, that's how you do it. You would generate all of these various positions outside of the player view, and you would spawn the horse on one of these random ones, and then simply have the horse move towards the player. However, in this game, since there is magic involved, the horse is literally just summoned. So over here, the player just pushes a button, and the horse magically appears. Now this is an excellent example for how you always have multiple approaches for solving the same problem depending on the theme and the various things particular to your game. Then over here they show some mounted combat. So this involves a bunch of interesting mechanics. Now based on what is shown in the video it appears to be a hold attack. So down here we see the player grab the sword, and then we see the sword actually go down and touch the floor. So while this is happening, the player is simply pressing down the attack button, and when the attack actually happens, the player simply releases. So it's pretty simple to handle that mechanic. You would just count up a timer using time.deltaTime while the player is holding down the button, and then it probably has a minimum hold time, so just checking if the time is above a certain amount. And then on release, if the time is above the minimum trigger, then you play the attack animation. Now another thing is for the hit detection. This can be as simple as doing a sphere cast right around the player. That would identify all of the objects within that area, so for example the enemy right in there. Then you check if the object within the area can be damageable, and if so, then you cause some damage. So that would be the simplest approach, and another approach if you wanted extreme accuracy, you would simply do perhaps a box cast with the exact same shape of the sword. Again, both approaches are valid, it just depends on what type of game you're making, how accurate you want it to be, so it depends if you're going for extreme realism or some arcadey action. So that's really just some very simple logic, but again, one of my goals with these videos is to show you how all of these AAA games look insanely complex, but as you dig deeper, you realize that all of these systems are relatively simple and something that you can definitely build in your own games. What makes this simple action feel so good, even in this simple 10 second clip, is really the sound and the animation. So the sword and sheaths, all the particles as it touches the ground, the excellent attack animation coupled with the awesome punchy sound effect. All of those elements put together are what really helps to sell the simple logic underneath. In search of the Elden Ring. Then over here, a very simple thing which is over here this creature as it attacks the player, the player is blocking and note how the player gets a tiny knockback. So he defends and yep gets pushed back. This is an example of a tiny thing that really improves your game. Adding a simple knockback is one of the easiest ways for making your game feel much more responsive. This tiny action makes the game feel much more alive as opposed to having the player block the hit and nothing would happen. Thy flame. 
Then over here, the player dodges this projectile. So dodging is another thing that you can implement in many different ways. So the simplest way is to simply make the dodge work pretty much just like real life. So the player is right in here and they're moving over here to the left. So they move very quickly. And just by getting the timing right, it automatically dodges the projectile hitbox. So that's the hyper-realistic way of doing things. However, another way to handle dodging, and really the most common way, is to add some sort of invincibility frames. So you just define a simple invulnerability timer. Then when the player presses dodge, you set it to a certain amount. And then on update, you're constantly counting it down. Then if the player is meant to take damage, you simply check that variable first. And if the timer is still active, then the player is invincible, so don't deal any damage. Now, this is usually the better approach because it makes the game a bit more forgiving and doesn't require some perfect hitboxes. Always remember that your goal as a game developer is not to perfectly recreate reality. Instead, your goal is to give the player a good time and letting the player do some death-defying dodges always feels great. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. And speaking of dodges, here the player does another one. So on this one, it seems like the player is still within the attack damage radius. So right in there, as the boss drops from the sky, yep, just like that. So chances are they are really going for the invulnerability timer approach. Which usually that is indeed the better approach, since it gives the player better control and a better feel for the game. They will fight. And they will die. Then over here we see some horse jump pads. Now, like I said, the main difference with this game from the other Souls games is the fact that it's open world. And From Software are known for making some very complex levels that usually open up with some new shortcuts as you progress. So in an open world game, it seems like these jump pads are solving that problem on a much grander scale. They essentially let you traverse a large vertical and maybe also some horizontal jumps after either you get the skill or simply enable the jump pad. They will die. So a great movement mechanic that perfectly fits with the theme of the game. Then over here, this jump attack looks really awesome. So the player attacks, and as soon as the attack ends, the player jumps back and gets some distance from the enemy. So I wonder if this is all just one attack, or perhaps it's the player doing an attack, then right after doing a dodge, and the game combines both actions. In an now how you would implement such a thing, once again, depends on the design you're going for. If you want maximum responsiveness, then perhaps you just trigger the jump back as soon as the player presses the button. However, in doing so, you kind of take away the risk of doing such a heavy attack. So another approach is to make this attack uncancelable. So as soon as the player starts off the attack, you cannot stop it. However, while the attack is happening, the game is still listening to player input. And then if the player happens to press the dodge button, you simply queue up the action instead of triggering it right away. Now, when using this approach, sometimes long queued actions can also make the game feel very unresponsive. For example, while in mid-attack you decide that you really don't want to dodge, but at that point the action has already been queued up, so you can't stop it. So the solution to that is to only queue up the action if the time from that action was taken, if it is under a certain amount of milliseconds, like 100 milliseconds before the dodge gets actually triggered. You check if it is within the time, and if so, trigger the jump. If not, you just ignore the player input. By doing that, you would keep the heavy attack as meaningful, but also allow the player to jump backwards with perfect timing without forcing the player to have some godlike reflex. Then over here we also see the player summoning. So you hit a button and a real player joins your world to help you, so that's a standard multiplayer connection. As for the player visual here, this is a simple for now shader effect. So what that does is it adds some glow to all the various edges. So all of the edges of the mesh right in there, they get a nice glow, so it looks pretty nice. And then just place it with a simple blue tint, and looks quite ghost-like, quite interesting. Wow. Then over here we see another approach of the dodge with invulnerability frames, right here. Now this method also has the benefit where you can let the player dodge through the attacks, which is always very satisfying. So right in there the attack starts and the player just dodges straight through it. So that's another approach you can take when you use the invulnerability frames method. Come on, 
Over here we see a sneak attack. It's a pretty common mechanic and it's actually pretty simple to do. So for this one you know of course the player position. And then you also know where the enemies are. And you know the direction in which they are facing. So that coupled with a certain detection FOV and you can identify if the player is in front or behind the enemies. So you just calculate the angle from there into the player. And then you simply check with the enemy's FOV. So for example, maybe it goes from minus 45 to plus 45. And if the player is not within that, so let's say here the player is on 80 degrees. If so, then he's simply not detected. Now, sometimes, depending on the game, you might also want to add a sort of listening mechanic. So if you wanted the enemies to be able to listen to some sounds by the player, if you want to add such a thing, then usually what you would do would be just a simple sphere cast around the enemy. And if the player is too close, then the enemy would detect even if outside of the field of vision. So that would be one way to simulate hearing. But in this case, we want some perfect sneaking to let the player do a massive sneak attack. Alright, so there you have it. That's my analysis of the Elden Ring gameplay trailer. Lots of great stuff here, I can't wait to play the game, I'm really curious to see how they're going to handle all of the open world mechanics. That is a pretty big difference from all of the other games, so it's going to be interesting to see how they tackle all those challenges. Okay, I hope you found the video interesting and useful and learned something along the way. Check out the full React playlist where I already covered a bunch of other games. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.